Since everybody on the internet likes to give their two cents about everything, as someone who grew up as a kid listening to Linkin Park and who developed a strong attachment to Chester Bennington, actually, I knew about a lot of his past when I was 11, 13, just researching it. Seeing his suicide two days ago, not seeing it, learning about it on, by checking TMZ.com, July the 20th. This has been a very bitter pill to swallow for Lincoln Park fans, but more specifically in my case, people who hold Chester Bennington to any level of esteem, either as an artist or just as another human being. Now, we know that he had a pretty effed up past, an effed up childhood. What I think made this uh, suicide a little more relevant was the fact that two months ago, Chris Cornell, a friend of Chester Bennington and another highly esteemed musician, hung himself in May. And I have a difficult time seeing it as mere coincidence that Chester Bennington hung himself on Chris Cornell's would-be birthday. But that's kind of what makes this also a very bitter pill to swallow. And something I've noticed a lot more nowadays, and it's almost kind of a contradiction considering what kind of era we live in. I'm surprised we don't get suicide notes anymore. When people kill themselves, they tend to leave people out in the dark a lot of times when they do it. I mean, the last time I've seen, like, a major suicide with information attached to it was Amanda Todd. But that was a different kind of context from what I'm talking about right now. A lot of us can only speculate as to why Chester Bennington did it. And I've seen two sides of this. We know that musician from Korn, Jonathan Davis, another band who I hold to a level of esteem, he said that anybody who leaves behind six children to kill himself, no matter how shitty his life is, that's a cowardly thing to do. I believe those were his words paraphrased unfairly by me, someone who stockpiles, doesn't read too into things when he makes these kinds of videos, but to me, you don't have to agree with someone's choice of killing themselves, but I do think that there's some value of understanding or even relating, connecting to why a person would do such a thing. And I can see why Chester Bennington could do it if past wounds were opened up. They say that time healed all wounds. And certainly through decades of success, a family, and close-knit friends, those wounds of his childhood could close up. However, we also have to take into consideration the fact that wounds that aren't fully closed can easily open up again. And Chris Cornell's death is probably one of those things that I strongly speculate, especially with all the coincidences attached, would be an incentive for him to think, you know, I'm done with this world. When life does certainly seem a lot shittier when you lose close friends, for whatever reason. But, again, I personally feel like this was probably some of the harder news at stake. I know boomers, they lose a lot of celebrities, Carrie Fisher, Muhammad Ali, all types of musicians like David Bowie and shit, Prince. But with boomers, they're at that age, they're not greatest era territory yet. But nonetheless, things start to catch up around that point. But for a millennial like me, seeing artists who I hold 
such a level of respect, even though Linkin Park isn't necessarily a band that I listen to heavily. I kind of phased them out for Alice in Chains around the late 2000s. And it's my older music at the time, which felt like a better fit for me. But I do listen to a lot of Chester's older bands, like Grey Days, that garage band, Sean Dodell, that he was in when he was 15. The guy has been nasty with it as a singer, as a performer, and as an artist, and also as a human being. So, yeah, this is probably going to be one of the few celebrity death videos I will cover. Just because this is someone who I think deserves some celebration and recognition regardless of what you think of Lincoln Park in general or the direction that they've taken later on. Because this is a cool dude and he's very influential. And he has lived a legacy both in his actions, he left a legacy in his actions as an influential musician, as a person, and he also has a big ass family left behind. I'm surprised, like, those kinds of dudes having that many kids. I would peg him for a one or two kids kind of guy, not a six kids kind of guy. So, I do feel bad for his kids. That's why I may not be able to fully agree with his death, but as I said before, I can understand it. This has been your boy, Mr. Wonka7, and suck my dick.